Have you ever wondered how an earthquake releases its energy? Since an earthquake is a phenomenon that occurs at a certain point on the Earth's crust, it releases its energy as seismic waves that travel through the Earth's inner layers in the form of high-frequency acoustic energy. Seismic waves are measured using seismographs that record the magnitude of an earthquake using the Richter scale. There are two main types of seismic waves, body waves and surface waves. Body waves can travel through the inner layers of the earth, which allows them to arrive before surface waves emitted by the same earthquake, because they have a higher frequency. Surface waves, on the other hand, can only move along the earth's surface in its outer crust. They have lower frequency than body waves and are therefore easily distinguished on a seismograph. Even though surface waves arrive after body waves, they are responsible for most of the damage associated with earthquakes. In deeper earthquakes, though, the damage and strength of these surface waves is reduced significantly. When an earthquake occurs with enough frequency or hertz and reaches a building, it sets the building in motion, starting with the foundation and then vibrating the rest of the structure. When studying the effects on the building itself, it is important to take note of the ground in which the building is set, the foundation that was used for the structure, and the magnitude of the earthquake. Taller buildings tend to shake longer than short buildings, which can make them relatively more susceptible to damage. Fortunately, many tall buildings are constructed to withstand strong winds, and some precautions have been taken to reduce their tendency to shake. For our first experiment, we wanted to examine the effects of an earthquake on different structures based on their heights. We began the experiment by constructing a box, then filled it with soil to represent the Earth's surface, and used different sized sticks to see how a constant force would affect different building heights. After total building height, the next most important factor to consider in structural resiliency is the building's natural frequency. The natural frequency of a building is measured by the number of times a building will vibrate back and forth. Every building has a relatively unique response, even though when acted upon by the same seismic ground motion. Similarly, every building will act differently during different earthquakes. When the frequency of a seismic wave and the building's natural frequency are close to or equal to each other, the building is damaged more. An example of this occurred on September 19, 1985, when an earthquake struck Mexico City in which buildings with 20 stories suffered the most. Why? Because the frequency of the earthquake was in re resonance with the natural frequency of the 20-story buildings. So as you can see, understanding the ground and building characteristics is essential to giving designers a feel for how their building will react to the Earth's vibrations. These characteristics are common to all buildings, both new and existing. From this experiment, we learned that sticks of various heights react differently to shaking with a constant frequency. The sticks of shorter heights swayed as little as half an inch, whereas the sticks of the larger height swayed at least two inches. We can now confirm that the taller the building, the harder it shakes. Al Mufti, a San Francisco based associate and structural engineer in ARUP's advanced technology and research, helped in developing the firm's resilience based earthquake design initiative rating system. This system provides a checklist for architects, engineers, and owners when designing buildings beyond life safety. The rating system sets specific criteria for designing new buildings to meet earthquake resiliency, in a manner similar to LEED rating system for sustainable design. According to Al Mufti, the system aims to prevent significant damage to structures, architectural components, facades, building contents, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. Examples of successful earthquake-resilient buildings in the U.S. are base isolated hospitals in California, one being the up-and-coming San Francisco General Hospital and Trauma Center. This building will be base isolated, and its structural elements will behave elastically in a design-level earthquake. 
These features, along with the strict code requirements for the design of architectural, mechanical, engineering, and plumbing systems, give the hospital a good chance of being able to withstand significantly less damage than other hospitals that were built simply to code, and infinitely less damage than other code design buildings. A tuned mass damper is a device frequently installed in buildings to absorb and mitigate the amplitude of vibrations acting on the particular structure. They play a crucial role in all related areas, from ensuring occupant comfort to preventing structural failure. Tuned mass dampers are oftentimes large concrete blocks or large steel components, which are placed into the building in a direction opposite to the expected oscillations of the resonant frequencies. For our second experiment, we decided to examine how a tuned mass damper operates. The experiment failed due to many factors, but the most important were, one, a mass damper needs to be suspended by springs in order for it to sway in its chamber and counteract the building's natural oscillation, and two, the chamber in which the mass is suspended must have a regulated atmosphere so that the air pressure affects the motion of the mass within the chamber. In our experiment, we used an open frame which irregulated the atmosphere around the suspended mass and used rigid springs for suspension, which hinders the function of the suspended mass as a damper. Examples of tuned mass dampers being used in high towers includes the Taipei 101 tower, which uses the largest mass damper in the world at 660 metric tons to prevent damaging vibrations from earthquakes. Also, the recently completed 432 Park Avenue residential tower in New York City uses two mass dampers to reduce the building's movement and still achieve its slender proportion of 1 to 19. It is very important that a residential tower moves as little as possible to be a comfortable living environment. Through our investigation, we can conclude that buildings react differently in relation to seismic activity, based on many variables. Through our first experiment, we concluded that buildings of different heights react to seismic activity based on their heights if all other variables could be eliminated, and that the taller bu the building, the less stable it is. In our second experiment, we realized that mass dampers are a complex prevention system that requires more accurate tools to properly be investigated. Although earthquakes have caused a lot of destruction historically, the prevention systems that are being developed will allow for a safer environment for future generations.